Let us look at one of the techniques for demand forecasting, which is known as the simple moving average. If the demand for a product is neither growing nor declining rapidly and also does not have any seasonal characteristics, then a simple moving average can be very useful in forecasting the demand. So basically if we plot a graph of demand versus time and if the demand is going like this that means there is no trend or seasonality in this demand. So this can be forecasted using simple moving average. However, if the demand has any trend or seasonality, such as and so on, then you do not want to use simple moving average. So basically in this method, we have to calculate the average demand for the n most recent time periods. This average becomes the forecasted demand for the next time period. So in terms of formula, the forecast is equal to the sum of last n demands divided by n. So basically we are just taking the average of the last n demands. Now once we know the actual demand for this time period, so initially we have done the forecast and then once that month is over or that period is over, then we will know the actual demand for that period. Then in order to forecast the following period, we will drop the oldest demand that we had considered in this previous formula and consider the actual sales which we got after the month completed. In other terms, let's say we have months 1, 2, 3. Now we want to forecast for month number 4 and we are taking a 3 month moving average. So in order to find the forecast for the 4th month, we will take the average of the actual sales for the first 3 months. So then we will get the forecast for the fourth month. But after the fourth month is over, we will get the actual sales. Sales, as for sales or you know actual sales. Now if we have to come up with the forecast for the fifth month, we will take the actuals for the last three months because we are taking three month average. So we will take the average of months 2, 3 and 4 in order to arrive at the forecast for the 5th month. So you can see that the average is continuously moving as and when we get the actuals for the latest period. That is why this is known as a moving average. Let us take an example to understand this. Now we have to find out the forecasted number of patients which are going to arrive in a clinic for week number 4 based on a 3 week moving average and the data that we have been provided is week 1 number of patients is 400 week 2 the number of patients is 380 
and week 3 the number of patients is 411 now we have to find out the forecast for week number 4 so what we'll do is some of the last n demands and we are doing a 3 week moving average so sum of the last n demands divide by n so we get 400 plus 380 plus 411 divided by 3. So this is 1, 8 plus 1, 9, 4 plus 3, 7 plus 4, 11 divided by 3. 3, 3 is a 9, 2 carryover. 3 9s are 27, 2 carryover, and 3 7s are 21. So, this is the forecast for week number 4. Now, after week 4 is passed, we come to know that the actual is 415. Now, in order to find out the 3 week moving forecast, for week number 5 we will drop week number 1 and take the average for week number 2, 3 and 4 and while doing this we will consider the actuals for week number 4, 3 as well as 2 so then our forecast for week number 5 becomes 380 plus 411 plus 415 divided by 3 5 plus 1 6 1 plus 1 2 plus 8 10 4 5 plus 4 9 plus 3 12 divided by 3 so this becomes 4 0 so this is the forecast for week number 5. Now the big question in this method of forecasting is how many periods of past demand should be used in order to calculate the average. So this question is answered by determining the stability of the demand series. In general, large number of periods or n should be used for demand series which are stable, while small values of n should be used for those that are prone to high fluctuations. So in this plot, the red color shows the actual demand. The blue color is showing the three week moving average, while the black color is showing the six week moving average. So if you note, the actual demand has a lot of fluctuations. Now, these fluctuations are visible in the three week moving average though a little bit smoother while the six week moving average is very very smooth. So basically a three week moving average forecast varies more and reacts more quickly to the large swings in demand as shown whereas the six week moving average is more stable because large swings in demand tend to cancel each other. So if you look at this is a peak and this is a valley and so this forecast the six week moving average has kind of nullified the effect of these peaks and valleys and is much more smoother than the three week average.